I love to tell it, Mariah Wilson, I'm 80 years old. Her, the midwife was Miss Estelle, Estelle Washington, and she was so good to me. She would bathe me, but she would make me get up out of the bed and make me go and walk. And before the baby, but you know they say, don't go, when you go out, walk around the house nine times. That's what they had before you can get out and go. And they didn't, you didn't get out and go like these folks had a baby like they and up and go on the mall. Yeah, you got to walk around that nine times before they let you get out and go anywhere. And you just could not go out like the folks go out now. You couldn't go. That you weren't allowed to go out because they said the baby was too young. And they really took care of us. My name is Mel O'Neill Harris Hobson, and I'm 78 years old. I was born and reared in Hale County. And uh, I'm the mother of four children, and three of them was born through midwife. And I have three girls and one boy. And uh, I was thinking my boy was the last, but four years later, I had another little girl. And uh, my first baby was born in Drew City Hospital in Tuscaloosa. But after then, all the rest of them were born by a midwife at my mother's house. And uh, when my second baby was born, Oh, I stayed in labor so long. But after all, after it was over with, uh, it was great. It was great to have another little girl. Then 17 months later, I had my boy, which I was so proud to get a boy because that's what we was trying for. Then I thought I was through because I had to go to the midwife's house that morning along with my husband and pick the midwife up and take her to my mother's house. So when uh, we got there, we was just, I just got there and got in the bed before my baby was born. And then, then four years later, I had another little girl. And my midwife was Mrs. Patsy Long. And I had to go get her again. I had to get Miss Patsy again. And we were just so proud of this baby because we thought we were through. And so we had this little girl, and her name is Ovetta Hobson. And she's not here with us today, but uh, she stays in Huntsville, Alabama. And that was my last one, and she was so sweet, but she was a daddy girl. But all of them was born with Mrs. Patsy Long. And uh, that mostly is my experience with that midwife. But she, up until she passed, she called all my children her children. And I made sure I told my children the story of their birth along with Mrs. Patsy Long. Lee Desta Mitchell for West Point. How many children do you have? Eight. Eight. Eight children. And how many of those were born at home with the midwife? Six. Six at home and two in the hospital. Well, she gave me good care because she was there with me all. She stayed with me. Sometimes it, it wouldn't be till the next day she stayed on overnight. She stayed all night. Mag Lofton was my friend. And uh, Mag Lofton. Yeah, I, I, if I would. I had to have them, but I'm thinking I ain't gonna have them no more. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather have one if I had, if I could. <laughs> if I had to have some. <laughs> oh, Lord, if I know I ain't gonna have no more, this ain't gonna be. Yeah, I sure would like for you to bring them back. I can't have them, but maybe some of my grandkids get some benefit out of it. Because I think they really take care of you real good. And it wasn't, wasn't expensive. Last one I had a midwife was $25. And she come back and see about me two days after. It'll be good for a lot of people, poor folks now, because folks gonna be poor a long time now. Because uh, I come along with the widow of poor, but it's been good in my days too, you know. But it's it's going back to being bad. Because I never know 
See, when I come along, there wasn't no jobs, no faculty jobs. Really, black folks was in at that time. Most of all they had was uh, milk and cows and dairy food and going to field, done field work and housework. You have no factors. Teaching school, that's about the only thing a woman has. I'm Anna Schuber. Um, I'm going to talk about my grandmother, whose name was uh, Ida Jewell McDonald. Uh, it wasn't until she was in her 90s, late 90s, and right before she died, that she revealed to us that she spent the majority of her young life as a young mother as a midwife in wa uh, the Walker County coal mining camps, uh, such as uh, Kimberly and Bradford and places along there. The best that we could find out was that she did this for approximately 20 years. Um, she said that it was her job to um, go to the woman when she was uh, in her early labor and she would clean the house, shoo the men out. Uh, it was also her job to feed the family while she was there preparing for the birth. Uh, I think probably the most important thing that she told me and the thing that probably meant something the most to me was the fact that she said it was her job to give the babies of these coal mining camps their very first bath. And so she would help the baby be born, comfort the woman, take the baby into the kitchen and in very warm water, bathe them sort of into the world, make sure they were swaddled, and then her job was done and she would go home. And um, she sometimes got paid by uh, a bushel of corn or a bushel of apples or things along those lines. The interesting thing to me, I think, is the fact that she kept this secret for so many years, and secret for so many reasons that we'll never know, because she wouldn't reveal to us why she never spoke about it. Uh, I did find it interesting that she did feel that she needed to reveal this sort of thing right before she died, and she passed away in, a, in the early 2000s, I think it was about 2000 that she passed away. So it's a wonderful memory that I have of a woman that I really cherished.